Hey, what's up everybody? My name is Trophy at the Babbling Belgian and welcome back to Gwent Edge, the show where we talk about interesting decks to play around with. Today is gonna be no different, because today we're going back to one of my favorite factions from the very beginning, Skellige. Since the last patch, we got a few buffs to underused cards, and one of them stood out to me, and I wanted to kind of make a deck around that card, and that card was Vader Maker. Or Vader Makar, Vader, I don't know how to pronounce this. It's basically a bastardization of Weathermaker, so I don't really know how to pronounce it when it's written like that. But regardless, this card is now 6 power for 6 provisions and still has the same effect. He increases all row effect durations by 1 if you put him on the melee row, or decreases row effect durations by 1 if you put him on the ranged row. So you could technically use him defensively, but this deck is all about weather effects. Weather effects. And we're in Skellige, meaning that we're going to benefit from all the Bloodthirst we'll be generating. And there's also a little bit of self-wound in this deck. So let's go through the cards one by one so I can explain how this deck is supposed to work. So at the bottom, you can see two Bear Witcher Adept 7 power. And as long as they're on the field, they will either heal themselves as they're damaged by one at the end of your turn or gain one armor instead. Very good uh, low provision cards that uh, are also the crux of the fact that we also have Portal in this deck. So Portal will guaranteed pull those two Bear Witcher Adepts if they're still in your deck, of course. There's a lot of counters against that these days, but... Still feels like a very good play, play even if you only pull one of them, because 7 points is still 7 points. The next up, of course, to benefit from those uh, self-healing Bear Witcher Adepts, we have two Priests. The Priests do not need to go onto those Bear Witcher Adepts. We generate so many damage pings that they're also perfectly fine to trigger on the Uncreate Greatswords. The Greatswords damage themselves by 6, have 10 base power, and heal themselves by one every time you damage an enemy unit. So that is gonna continuously go up if you take some away from uh, them through the Salt Blood Priest. That is also not a problem because again, the Salt Blood Priest at the end of every one of your turns, you damage uh, the unit to the right by one and boost yourself by two. So that all works in conjunction very, very nicely. Then of course, because we're generating so many damaged units, we have one Bear Witcher Mentor who boosts himself by one for every damaged allied unit, or if you get Adrenaline 3, just for any damaged unit on the field, which can be very, very big in this deck. Especially because a lot of decks these days tend to go wide with a lot of units, and this just benefits from that hugely. Then we're still going along with the damaging, so uh, two Uncrate Longships. So if, as long as these guys are on the melee row, you damage every unit your opponent plays by one. Same thing with the Dim and Light Longship. You have an order ability that allows you to damage an enemy unit by one, but of course you also damage yourself, and you can do that once every turn. Uh, just an extra ship to, uh, well, be in conjunction with Raiding Fleet, which of course allows you to apply bleeding to a unit for four turns and then summon a random bronze ship. So I have that one light long ship in there just as a caveat if your other two are gone. Double Bear Witcher. Bear Witcher is still very strong, almost a guaranteed eight points because he damages himself by three, leaving five points, but then also damages an enemy unit by three if you uh, have Adrenaline 4 at that point. And of course, just a stunning blow to have some basic removal in there as well. We talked about the great swords. Nevelen. Nevelen is has also been buffed uh, because his, his provisions went down. Uh, from 7 to 6. He still moves 3 adjacent units to the other row. You can use this either defensively if um, there's a very important unit on a uh, row locked that you need to move, or of course you can just use this to move 3 units into a weather effect that, all, that is already in play, because that is what this deck is about. So Vader Maker we just talked about. Heim also benefits really really greatly from the fact that we generate uh, slightly damaged units. So if you do that on an enemy unit with, for example, like 7 base power, it's damaged by one, you grab that 5 power from them away and put that on your own. Uh, so basically swapping around units power, but for only 7 provisions, this is a very, very powerful card. Then Gerd allows you to spawn a Deafening Siren on the opposite row and damage all units on that row by one afterwards, unless you have Adrenaline 4, which only damages that Deafening Siren then, which is... Something that you need to be careful about, 
But if your opponent goes white rather quickly at the beginning of a match, this is the perfect card to counter that. And to counter white uh, plays, there's something else you can do as well, because Skellige Storm is an absolute powerhouse. So it spawns Storm on an enemy row for two turns. Storm basically damages all units on that row by one at the start of their turn. So uh, something you can also increase the three turns with Vedermiker. So uh, yeah, I'm just going to keep mispronouncing that card probably. But uh, Skellige Storm, very, very powerful. If you manage to put this and Ragnarok, because Ragnarok is also in this deck, uh, on your enemy's rows, and then increase that with Vader Maker, you have a lot of damage on the field. So Ragnarok spawns Cataclysm on an enemy row for four turns, and Cataclysm spreads out three uh, damage on that row. So that is very very cool in uh, spreading out those uh, those damage ticks then madman lucas of course when you deploy him on the melee row you damage an enemy by twice the number of damaged enemies so something you'll need to set up but uh, definitely worth the trouble um because he he can do a lot of damage with this then her Kadoog, even though it has been nerfed i've included it because we benefit from those damaged units as well so usually gonna go for a bear witcher um, and then heal the two units next to them with uh, by two if you manage to uh, get that far. Then Morgvark. Morgvark is back. Morgvark, Heart of Terror. When you deploy him, you damage an enemy unit by one every time. You constantly do that until that enemy is damaged. So guaranteeing you a damaged unit, um, especially powerful on a very, very high boosted unit. Uh, and... On something like Colgrim, he just outright kills him because Colgrim only has one power, so Colgrim will go down to that uh, regardless. We also have Kurati Heatwave, very, very useful uh, regardless of your um, game plan. You can use it to either destroy the scenario card of your opponent or just a very, very high powered unit. So useful all the way and then of course the last two cards we just talked about so Ragnarok and Portal um, and then the last thing we need to talk about is our leader ability I haven't really used this in a deck before I think but Rage of the Sea spawns rain on an enemy row for two turns and a deafening siren, deafening siren on your side of the board and you could do that twice so this guarantees you that Vader Maker will be at least uh, nine points so that is why I went for this ability. It's just a guaranteed weather typing uh, that allows you to put weather on both rows in one go and then increase that weather duration with Vader Maker. So enough said about the cards in this deck. Uh, let's go into an example match to show you how you should be playing this. And then we're going against Syndicate. That is going to be interesting. So hidden cash. <laughs> and yeah... I'm really curious about this because we don't actually see a lot of Syndicate but I'm really glad to get that uh, Syndicate team back in my head now because it is still amazing. So Mulligan Whites of course you want to Mulligan those Bear Witcher Adepts out of your hand just in case you grab Portal and then you don't want to have too many ships in your hand as well so let's get rid of that light long ship and we get both of the uh, long ships, the Uncrate long ships. So should be good as a start. Um, not that complicated. Uh, we have some removal, we have the greatsword, and we have the double Uncrate longship. So, seems like a very good start. We even have Ragnarok if we want to. So, uh, opponent goes first. And we start with a passive Flora Peaches. That is obvious that we're going to be starting with that. We get a hidden cash triggered immediately, and I think I'm just going to... Hmm, do I start with just the Stunning Blow? Yeah, Passive Flora Peaches at this point would be a possible of... Um, well, it's going to go up, so that's going to be at, at maximum 14 points. So if we just take that out with Stunning Blow, we've taken out the Engine card and we can just move on. Salamandra Lackey, that's not something you see all that often. But of course, he uh, they boost themselves by one every time you... yeah. You get a coin for the first time in your turn. So you can only boost itself by one every turn. And you need to be earning coins. Which is not something that a hoarding deck will do all that often, I feel like. Um, I'm guessing the longship is going to die to a payday or something like that. But And I actually don't mind playing Ragnarok early. Uh, especially against something like that. The Slice Seductress. Like yeah, it tickles its hits. Um, but... Since the longship is still there, might as well just put down the second... No, let's put down the greatsword. Um, I could try... 
No, let's just put down the great sword as a start. It, it could die, um, but they're gonna have to play a card. Yeah, if it's payday, the great sword is just gone. That's not that much of a problem. We can put down a second. Okay, tax collector. So tax collector will automatically boost the lackey every turn. I can't destroy it just yet with the bear witcher. But it is a very good start. I might actually just put down Ragnarok now on the back row. If I get lucky, the Dex Collector might go in one go. Um, but as I said, I don't really... Wow, that's all three on the Slice Seductress. That was interesting. <laughs> and then we get Sol de Navarrete. That is also fine. We can take that out with Morgvark. So I can't trigger the Bear Witcher just yet, so the Tax Collector is going to live for one more turn because that's, that's a turn and four, I still have six cards. So let's put down the second Longship. And see where this reaches us. And we still don't get damage on the Tax Collector. That's actually fine. I can just uh, use the Bear Witcher next to take that out. We still have two turns on Ragnarok. So that basically is negating um, Sol. Because Sol would be getting, I think he's only getting two, yeah, he's only getting two points right now. I'm guessing my opponent is going to go for more coins right now, because that's not... Oh, Hidaran? But you don't have any spawning units yet. So that's going to be damaged twice. Um... Let's use the Bear Witcher now. I can damage the Tax Collector and just kill it in one go. And that just puts us ahead even. And we still have one more turn of Ragnarok if you want to. You have two damaged units, so I could technically also kill Idaran. The next unit that is going to be played is also going to... Oh no, he's probably going to boost something now. What the hell just happened? So he, ah, he went to the maximum amount of coins. Um, oh, but they made a big mistake there. Yeah, because because of Ragnarok, I'm going to go over this now. They do get three points now. They do get three points. So they're going to lose three points, but then gain two, three points. Um, do I want to grab that first round? I don't have a lot of Bloodthirst going at the moment. Uh, because they got a bit lucky with the placements. Hmm. I could just Morgvark this, but I think it's too early to use Morgvark or Karate Heatwave. There's no damage otherwise. Um, if they pass, they'll get through. Oof. Yeah, I think I'm just going to pass. There's not much use in me spending my, my big cards here. I'll be able to use the Bloodthirst later on. So if they pass, they'll get enough points because of Soul to get over me. Unless they don't realize it. You're guaranteed to go over me. Hello? Okay, yeah. They checked Soul, so... Wait, what? Okay. <laughs> that wasn't very smart, now was it? Is that lost you two coins? Why? They didn't even trigger the the tribute ability. That was that was not not okay. Fair enough, I guess. But you can also already see how the points you're getting from um, the weather effects can sometimes confuse your opponent. I need to get rid of the ship. Um, I don't want to risk wasting. Although it doesn't really matter at this point. I could use a mentor. If need be, we still have Skellige Storm, so let's get rid of the Bear Witcher and we get one of the Adepts. Okay, our opponent didn't push. Um, I'm guessing the Mentor isn't going to be that useful, because it seems like we're not getting that much Bloodthirst out of the fact that, of course, um, Hidden Cash like this generates a lot of uh, boosted units, so it's hard to get that Bloodthirst up. So there we go, Mentor, and there we go. So in the next mulligan phase, we'd really need to be careful to get rid of those Adepts because we don't want to get those Adepts in our hands when we play Portal. But uh, that should be rather straightforward. If you pull one now, then we just know what our mulligans are going to be. 
Um, we did get Raiding Fleet as well, so I'm gonna have to be careful. If I get rid of the Adept, I get Vader Maker, one Priest and his ship. I am gonna stick with this. Yeah, I don't want to risk getting another Adept. I don't want to risk pulling a long ship, so um, this is gonna be A-OK. -okay. So we got Karate Heatwave, we got Morgvark, and we got the yeah, Vader Maker, so the, the big play of this deck. Let's put Portal on the back row. That gets us our first Adept. And that is really, really nice. We get at least three turns of Skellige Storm. We're absolutely certain about that. If we get a row that is filled rather nicely, maybe by something like Azai Javed, that would be nice. We can actually show off why weather is so powerful because it ignores defenders and they get another lackey um not that important for now let's just set up the priest because of course the priest is gonna take on the adept and just give us two turns uh, two points every turn so we have our own engine set up immediately if the priest dies that's gonna be sad but not something that I'm too worried about. We have plenty of other cards to uh, deal with this. We get Onneromancing. On. What is that going to be? Always curious. Oh, yeah, okay. So that's... I've seen this played out quite a lot these days. So we get Matahuri, which basically means that we lose the second Adept. Do not make me beg. Because the second Adept is pulled from the deck. Um... I do have to start counting. If I want to play this correctly, I need to start putting down some weather in about two turns. Yeah, two turns. Um, I'll show you in a second why. But let's start off with Raiding Fleet on the Salamandra Lackey. They can definitely use that bleeding. And now we put down the Longship over here. We don't use the longship just yet. I could have used it to trigger a bit of blood thirst, but that's not really necessary just yet. I'll use it to quickly get my greatsword up to six. And then we get Townsfolk. Oh, is it? Um, so now we got six cards for our opponents. We have five turns of rain and three turns of Skellige Storm. So let's keep that in mind. Um, I should probably play a turn no i'm gonna wait so let's put let's put the great sword down yeah let's put the great sword down um i am gonna put one bit of rain over there that's gonna trigger blood thirst on those regardless uh and i'm gonna use oh no 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 not another one um and then just damage the townsfolk it because the townsfolk is the big engine card here so we want to take that out as quickly as possible, the rain is doing its work. And now we got the Passiflora. I have been waiting for that, because of course the Passiflora is where we're going to be spending our Karate Heatwave on. So there we go. Um, let's use Karate Heatwave on Passiflora. Uh, the rain is going to end now, but that's not too bad. I wanted to just damage those units enough that they're going into um, Blood Thirst at the very least. I could apply a bit more rain if they don't generate another coin next turn. And we're getting Operator on another Tax Collector then. A Sly Seductress. Ooh, that means... Yeah, that is... That means that you're... Uh, that means that your... Um, townsfolk is gonna die. So let's put Skellige Storm on there now. So that's going to give us Blood Thirst on every single one of those units. And I'm going to damage the Sly Seductress there as well. Uh, and I'm also going to... Am I going to put down Rain already? Oh, I love that Syndicate team. That is just badass. Um, I could put down Rain already. I think it's probably better to hold off on that. Although some damage on those... Mm. No, let's just wait. Let's just wait. We have one more turn to apply that Rain. So there goes the Townsfolk. And the Slice Seductress goes on to the front row. And now we're going to go with our big play, our Vader Maker play. So we use the Rage of the Sea to put Rain on that front row. 
And now we use Vedamaker to increase the counter. You can see that on the right there, that will go up by one as well. Um, then we damage the Slice Seductress and get onto our next bit. So uh, units are getting destroyed, which is not that much of a problem. We have four damaged units at the moment, so we can actually take out the Passive Florida Peaches in the front if we want to. Um, because that is actually perfectly 8 now. Might as well do that, although... It's gonna get damaged again. I can do that next turn. So, let's just put the Witcher Adapt down. Um, and then damage the Front Slice Seductress by 1. There we go. And then we get Igor the Hook. We'll spawn another Passiflora Peaches, I would think. Or another Slice Seductress. Slice Seductress? Slice Seductress. Yeah, it doesn't really matter at this point. So let's just play Madman Lugos. He's gonna destroy the... F I think I'm gonna destroy Igor the Hook. Because I can use Morgvark on the next turn to get the Passiflora Peaches down as much as possible. Um, and then just... Yeah, it doesn't really matter at this point. So uh, let's just hit the Passiflora Peaches there. I don't think it matters. I don't think it matters at all. There we go. And that's the power of the Apocalypse Now deck. I'm gonna probably give it a, a proper name, but I feel like that's very fitting with just the amount of weather you're putting on your board. That was against Hidden Cash. 66-22 in the final round. The, I mean, they did misplay, but even if they had another card, were 44 points ahead. That was... Amazing. And I gotta say, it was also a perfect match to showcase um, the best parts of this deck. So we got to use uh, all our weather effects, we got to use Portal, we got to use Karate Heatwave, and we got to use, of course, Vader Maker. Um, this deck is really powerful if played correctly, and most of the decks I've encountered so far do tend to play a bit wider, especially stuff like, like Lockdown or uh, Filgard. They, they try to spread out a bit with their units, usually playing a, a few units in one turn. And that just benefits this deck greatly, especially with Skellige Storm and Ragnarok. It just spreads out those damage ticks, especially on units that aren't really engine cards. You can just take those out, and then if you want to take out a big unit, um, you still have Madman, Lugol, Skorati Heatwave and Morgfark um, to take those boys out if you need to. So very, very powerful deck. Let me know what you think because this is the Apocalypse Now deck. And that's going to be it for this episode of Gwentech. Hope you guys enjoyed it very much because I actually did. Because I, I, I was glad that I were, was able to figure out another new deck uh, that was slightly based on the new patch and still is pretty competitive if you use it right. So hope you guys can put it to good use. If you have any advice for me to uh, improve upon this deck, don't hesitate to let me know in the comment section down below because that's what we're here for after all. We're here to help each other out. So thank you guys enormously for watching and hope to see you in the next episode of Grantage. Goodbye and stay nutty.